Hello and welcome to the DFS underscore PhD show. This is the second video in our series, kind of like getting your DFS basics down. Uh, this one's about knowing your numbers and trusting your gut. So this is as you start doing more and more lineups, um, figuring out what you're good at. So at first, for the first many years, so obviously like when I was not good at DraftKings, you're just kind of piddling along and you're putting in like a couple of dollars a day to have fun. And a lifetime, you are paying the rate on DraftKings. So around, where is it? Around here? Yeah. So I'm starting to pay attention to my Roto Tracker's numbers around here. So I'm aware at this point that the satellite strategy has maybe all this money we talked about in the last video. But if you go the satellite uh, and you hash this by category satellite, I've been making money every year. It's not just that last year. So this is what you want consistent results. You use the satellite strategy. You go back to video one. This is video two. But my main point is, um, this is about kind of knowing your numbers and testing your gut. So figuring out, I knew that I had a good chance at baseball, basketball, and football this season before I had big wins. The way I knew it was not, you know, looking at, my, oh, yeah, the number went up on the lifetime track. That's not what I'm talking about. I knew it from this graph we'll get to in a second. But this is what I'm talking about. I think we're testing our gut, right? So when I say knowing your numbers, obviously, I made a lot of money. And the, the most important number is profit and making sure that like, you know, so this year is even better than lifetime. You can do the math. I was a bad gambler for like five years there, basically paying like a thousand dollars. I think they had some sort of treatment of, of uh, promo funds and stuff that basically paid all that, but that would only play whenever there's promos, you know. But anyway, this year it's going way better, obviously. I think that's regression to the mean. We can all agree. Not, and I mean... Maybe next year I win the tournament champions or something and it's equally as good. But in general, I'm on an extremely run good thing and I'm not raising my allocation as a result. So I still only have $10,000 allocated to fantasy sports. So, you know, um, I, I'm not that pro of a pro, but I'm telling you all that I know. And that's probably exactly the kind of pro who tells you everything that. So uh, the reason that I trust my gut and the reason that I say that a lot is not like as a cop out. I have my feelings and I'm telling you on the video what they are. Some of them are really stupid, strong leans that I'm not sure you should be making. And some of them are just gut calls. And the reason I go with gut calls is because they are proven to be a real life thing. People question it overall. But it sounds like generally there's common findings where you give people weighted decks and they can tell before they can conceptualize and say something is wrong. They have a feeling in their gut. They have a feeling in their hands. They have a feeling in their skin. If they're uncomfortable when they're playing with the bad decks. So when you encounter a player on fantasy or a, a person some tout is plugging and your gut's like, whoa, that's a bad deck. That's a bad card. I don't want to do that. Don't do it. That's a real thing. That's your gut. That's your reaction. And I'm listening to my gut in that exact same way when I listen to other people. I'm not like the only expert I listen to. Everybody who is doing these shows is listening to a couple of other guys who they like. For me, I conceptualize that as the council of dudes. So thank you for welcoming me onto your council of dudes. I hope that I can serve you well as I assume one of the more mathy members of your council of dudes. Um, but so you're trusting yourself, you're playing with money you can afford to lose, but then you are playing in competitions where you are seeing consistent good results. So I'm talking, you get to the level where you're now playing 20 lineups a night for a while. Eventually you have thousands of lineups over the course of a, of a, a season. So you have good data and you need to trust your data. So let's say this year, or let's do, yeah, this year, because I was saying, you know, um, date from like last year, beginning of last football season. I just want to make sure I get both football and basketball here. So I've been outperforming. There's a good reason for me to keep playing DraftKings, right? I'm outperforming the top bin. This is the cumulative distribution bucket on Roto Tracker. I highly recommend it. There's a free version of this. So even while you're, you should do it while you're coming up. And then when you get $100,000, you pay Roto Tracker, just like I did. So, I mean, I, I, I recommend that. This is the cumulative distribution chart. This is more important than making money. This is how you are finishing in your overall competitions, you know, you make sure I only play GPPs, but you can make sure if you also do head to heads or whatever, this is a statement that the whole thing I'm doing here is about GPPs. So I'll just put category GPP here. It's not going to change my distribution much because it's all I play, but you will see I massively outperform GPPs for the cash. And that's not by accident. That's by a combination of strategy, but, and you can see I've gotten pretty lucky 
on the top finishing positions, the top 0.1% and top 0.2%. So I expect that to regress. I don't expect for Haywood Highsmith to rocket every single night. There's also clearly a data problem here, but I don't really think that matters. And it goes away in some of the different parsings of the data. I don't know what's going on here. Anyway, if you do, leave a comment. Um, but generally speaking, this is what you should see in your data. If you don't see it, it's not good. But obviously, even for myself, I know what my good sports are. So let me show you my good sports. This is independent of the money I made. I made money at basketball, yes, but I massively outperformed basketball. This is a combination of a really solid council of dudes. Shout out to DKDFS, one of the sharpest in the industry. Saberson has a really good building, a great correlation, um, anti-correlation thing they got going on there. But regardless, I was outperforming by a factor of two, the top bin of 0.5%. And when you zoom in even further, I'm pretty sure massively outperforming the very top bin. I don't, I, when I looked at this in February or whatever, after I just had my NFL win, I was like, okay, it's basketball season. Should I go full bore into this NBA finals? This data tells me, yeah, you're going to win a goddamn lot of money. Sorry. I don't know if that counts as cursing, but, and yeah, I did win a lot of money, but I didn't win the money because of this data, right? The data are kind of correlated, but just one data point is me winning all that money, right? And this is over many, many data points. This is 29 wins in the top 0.1%. Of that, only three of them are big money wins. A lot of them were in practice rounds, 50 cent competitions where like they paid out maybe a thousand dollars or something. So that's where you're going to figure out your data. You're not going to pay. Don't pay a big rate unless you have a big, big amount of money. For some reason, you want the water. You just want to play around and have the access to the top. But anyway, this is the best my data set looks. That's why I was going full bore into that NBA finals. That's the most I ever put on the line. It was because of this. Wherever your data looks like this, do it. Let me show you what bad data looks like. I put considerably less on the line for the NHL because, well, that looks kind of like a scatter plot of a random dude who doesn't know what's going on with the NHL. So I am not outperforming. Let's see uh, what's going on in NFL. This is the other place I want a lot of money. Yeah, not as strong as basketball. I'm not going to go wild on NFL season. I'll play the first first week, and if I don't win a million dollars, I'm not going to 150 max the next week because it's way more expensive to 150 max. So I'll do what I do in uh, probably what I'm doing in baseball and just do like 50 lineups after the first week because I know I'm not that good at football. Just like sad to say, I'm not as good at basketball or baseball as I am at basketball. That's not that bad though. Yeah, I outperform the top four or five percent. I'm just getting unlucky. I think this is still my conclusion, even though it's been a while. It just looks like. How can I outperform every single 0.1% bin between like zero and six-ish and not the top one? It just seems like luck. I, I feel like I'm getting unlucky. That's the, the visceral feeling from, from the summer as well. So I'm not changing too much about it. Although this is the time where I say you need to A-B test stuff. So this is, um, I'm, I'm talking about testing your gut right now. So figuring out which sports you overall have uh, ability with. And I guess, yeah, I've said A-B testing is the next uh, video. So we're going to get into um, not just testing your gut, but testing your optimizers. Because at this point, you're, you know, you've gone through, you've got your contest selection and satellite strategy down, you ground for a couple of years. Now you know your numbers, you're, you're honing in on your, your council of dudes. And when you're honing in on a council of dudes, that means you're testing out optimizers. So when you're testing out optimizers, you need to be doing A-B testing, which is formal testing of one versus the other. You need to wind up at at least a relative maximum of value for yourself and a process that's unique to you. Because when you have a process that's unique to you, you can create, like, when you look at these pros, that'll be another one of our videos looking at their oeuvre, their sets for, like, whatever big slate is up. And you can create 150 lineups that you're sure have the statistics, at least, of um, lineups that are going to win. So that's what, what um, improving your process is really all about. Because, like, you know, like I just showed you, in basketball, yeah, I want a lot of money, but it's not a freaking accident. I'm a monster at basketball. And like, I guess really I need to do basketball content. I still like, I don't want to compete with guys who like want me a bunch of money, you know? So that's why I haven't been doing basketball content. I'm definitely going to do basketball showdowns. My other thing I thought was NFL. That's where I, NFL showdowns. Let me see if I really should. Um, I guess I want all the money in a different event. So it probably would not show up here. GPP uh, style showdown. Have a captain? Yeah, I think it has a captain, right, for uh, NFL. Yeah, all right. Well, we're doing it because I massively, massively outperformed. That's 16.7. That's a 7x. All right, yeah. 
So this will be the first thing we show on those videos when I do start doing the NFL showdown videos. My NFL showdown, actually, did I add NFL? This is still NBA showdown, obviously. If I add NFL showdown, not quite as good. All right, I'm definitely going to do NBA showdown videos. Now, granted, should I do NBA regular videos? Let's see. If I choose a style or if I cancel showdown, yeah, that was the same deal. I should just do NBA videos. So, hey, you know, going through my my uh, knowing your gut, knowing what I should make videos on. Looks like it's NBA primarily. Um, definitely not doing NHL. I feel like tennis is open up, not USFL. I felt like I've done pretty well at tennis overall. I, I talk about it online a lot. Yeah, I'm outperforming a few of these top bins. Let's let's bucket. I don't do as many competitions, so let's get some good data. Top two bins, slide out performance. It's not as dominant as basketball, but it's still, you know, when you, the top 1%, it's almost double. I think I know what it takes to get to the absolute top in tennis, but I will say that's not as dominant as I expected. Let's have a look at NASCAR. Should I just give it up entirely? This is kind of for me, right? I mean, I'm doing it, you know, you should do this for yourself as well. I like to play some stuff. Yeah, and I have a general sense that I'm just playing NASCAR to get whatever tier credits for playing the minimum of NASCAR. And that's how I play it. So, yep, not going to not gonna steer into putting more money in NASCAR. I, I do feel like I rock it at League of Legends, but that's just because I uh, like League of Legends gambling and pay attention to it a lot during the pandemic. Potentially, I should lean into that. Nah, not that much. This is not dominant. Um, what about uh, anything else? Have I done enough F1 for it to show up on the charts? Yeah, not really. Um, what about, yeah, golf. I've done enough golf now. Is it PGA or is it called golf? Well, golf has some sort of weird data problem. Don't love that. It's right at 50% too. I wish there was PGA or something. Maybe if I go to smaller buckets, it'll ruin the data even more. If I go to larger buckets, it ruins the data less. But yeah, golf's not going well. I know it's not going well. Golf's a place where I feel like I need to bring in some new data, and I really like a couple of different people. I like Rick Rungood, and I don't know if he's associated. Is Rungood associated with Run Pure? I think that might be a different things. So I'll have to look that up, but I'm going to bring in some additional... Uh, I need somebody else on that issue. I know I need some... I don't feel like I have a good enough data set with golf. I feel like uh, it's, it's not granular enough. Uh, MMA, that's the other place where I've been playing around recently. I don't know how things are going. Oh, oh yeah, basketball tomorrow. MMA is going fine. That's a little bit more here than I'd like in the 20th percentile. Hopefully that's a data thing. I go to 1% on my finishing. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I got a good sense of what it takes in MMA and that's almost 2X. It's not 7X like basketball because I don't understand the sport or whatever. Um, but I feel like I can lean into MMA a little bit, but I'm not going to give you any breakdowns because I'm just follow MMA DFS, all the good guys for that. Um, but I am going to leave my allocation there alone. WNBA, how's it going? I listen to Cody on this, but I feel pretty good at WNBA. Yeah, I'm leaning into WNBA just because I'm good at NBA and it's basically similar. It's almost 2X at the top 1% finishing. Have I got a little unlucky at the very top? That's how it feels. Nope. Slide out performance at the very top. Okay, now that's basically seeing. So this average here is where you should be for every bucket. And so some buckets should be above the average. And then really the average should be maybe in here. I think that might be a little bit off for, uh, there might be an averaging, like a rounding thing going on in the background. Okay, well, that's uh, that's a little bit about knowing your numbers and testing your gut. Um, obviously, I've told you to trust your gut and incorporate your uh, advice from your council of dudes. And next up, we'll talk about how to A-B test and improving your process with A-B testing with an example um, that I did over, was that a, a month ago while I was in Boston. All right, guys, remember you're good enough, you're strong enough and gosh darn it, somebody's gotta win that money, might as well be us.